Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today I want to talk about preparing architectural models for 3D printing. So any of you who know me know that uh, I like SketchUp, uh, and I also like 3D printing. I do a lot of 3D printing. Uh, I even wrote a book on 3D printing. Um, I like the idea of taking something that doesn't exist or something that exists only in imagination or, or something like that and creating it and, and making it into a real world thing. So today I want to talk about doing that, but with architectural models. I know it's there's there's so many things. If you're in 3D printing, you've probably been on the sites where you download models or you've created stuff in SketchUp and you know made stuff that sits on your desk or uh, you know busts of famous people or whatever, but um, there's something cool about taking an existing model, a design, a building that you're going to create and, and printing it out at scale. Um, there's some caveats to that though, and that's exactly the things that we're gonna talk about right now. All right, so I have a simplified model here. By simplified, I mean this is already a solid, so it is just, it's one big piece. So things like if I zoom in here, let's look, uh, the shutters you see here actually come back to the wall. Um, I don't have mullions or anything like that. These aren't clear pieces. I can't see inside. In fact, inside, if we were to, let's go ahead and just pop our head in here. We'll go break through this window. You can see that inside is just a big empty space. So this is already a solid. I didn't go through that process. Um, we've done other videos on creating solids, that sort of thing. Uh, if there's enough demand, if, if you really want to see how this process works, taking from a full uh, model out to a solid, um, let me know in the comments and we could possibly do that, but it's not a quick, it's not an easy process. If this is a model that was created for, you know, architectural drawings where I have things broken into the top floor, bottom floor, uh, interior walls, doors, trim, all that stuff. There's a lot of stuff that has to get deleted out. Um, I'd like to say it's as simple as grabbing it all and say, make an outer shell. Sometimes you can get pretty close, but realistically you end up deleting a lot of your tags, you know, just the, all the interior groups, all the, all the, everything that's not going to be seen on the outside. And then unfortunately there's a lot of work of cleaning up architectural details, getting rid of some stuff. Um, if I'm going to 3d print this at scale, uh, there's some stuff that I know I don't need. I don't like this house has gutters, but that's not on there because that little super thin, I mean, think about how thick the material of a gutter is. That little piece of sheet metal, think about how thin that is. Now print that out at a quarter, eighth inch equals a foot. You know, it's almost nothing. So there's some details that just don't come along. Um, doorknobs is a perfect example too. This, this model did have a doorknob. Uh, I took it off because again, it's gonna be the size of a head of a pin once I print it out. So that's the first point is certain details don't need to come along. There's some stuff I could have done in here. There's there's brick on the front of this building. I could have put that brick in and tried to see if I could get that detail to show up in the print. Um, I have seen models where uh, shingles will, were drawn and, and actually showed up in the print. So that would be possible too. But generally speaking, again, if I'm gonna, depending on how small I'm gonna print this, that's the other thing. If I print this and it's like, you know, a foot high and printing it in big chunks on a, on a large format printer, well, that could work. That could, uh, I could leave more detail in. I'm not, I'm printing this on a print bed of less than six inches wide. So this is gonna be fairly small. So that's actually the first thing we, we talk about here, right? I'm gonna take this group, I'm gonna just copy it over here and I'm gonna take it and I'm going to scale it down. I'm gonna bring it this way. And let's see what uh, let's see what 0.02 percent. So 0 0.02 is two percent of the original size. Let's see how big that is. Okay. So if I draw a line from here to here, it's going to tell me that's nine inches. So this is already too big. This is still too big. So I'm going to undo. Let's undo. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to scale it again. I'm going to scale it to. 0.01%, so one one hundredth of the size. So 1% of the, of the actual size. This is modeled one to one. Of course, you can see that. So here's my life scale figure. Yep, all the same size. So if I do that, if I scale to 1%, all right, it's gonna be four inches across. 
So that's actually a pretty big print for a small printer, but you can kind of get an idea of how big that's going to be. Now, before we go any further, well, let's, let's look at this. Let's say I was to take this, export this as a solid, throw it out to my printer and hit print. What would happen? Well, some stuff is not going to make it through. Um, let's look at, let's look at these columns. Columns are the first thing I always check out. Columns, they look good. These are, this is what they look on the, like on the real building. If I check this, it tells me, uh, it's, I don't know, it's about a 16th of an inch. Well, about a 16th of an inch isn't good enough. So one of the things I do when I'm working with 3D prints is I generally change my units. So I'm gonna go to settings. This is under SketchUp on Mac. It's under the Windows window, or the Windows menu on Windows. And I'm going to, actually that's the wrong one. I do that often. I'm sorry, for both of us, we're just gonna go to Windows, go to Model Info, and we're gonna to go to units. In units, I'm gonna to change to decimal, and then I'm gonna change to millimeters. Um, I can do that for the other two also, but right now I'm just really concerned about checking some dimensions. So if I come in here and I draw a line from here to here, it tells me that is about one millimeter. Um, depending on the fidelity of your printer, that is doable. But if, assuming I'm printing it standing up like this, that means a bunch of little tiny squares that are one millimeter are gonna get drawn over and over and over again coming up like this. Uh, that's sort of a red flag for potential failure. So it's possible, you could try it, but I don't know how well that's gonna look. Uh, some other things here, um, and spoiler, I did try to print this exactly like this at scale, and I think these printed, but the support material I put in here to support this uh, roof right here, when I removed that, I just demolished these posts. So I don't actually know if they printed well or not. Uh, the support material removal process killed them. So um, let's look at a window. Let's look at this window right over here. So let's see, from here to here, that's half a millimeter. And this depth here is also half a millimeter. So think about how thick half a millimeter is. That's not, so the, the print head's gonna come along here, come out, come over, come back. Oh, this is even smaller. Let's look, what's this? This is 0.125 millimeters. So that is a really small move. So it is possible that if I print this model at scale as it is now, this will show up, but odds are good it's gonna kinda look like a little melted rectangle on the side of it. And that is exactly what it looks like. You can barely see this bump right here. This bump in is kinda there, but again, as it prints, you know, the print head moves and it kinda, it doesn't make these perfectly sharp edges like I see right here, it's gonna kinda, you know, it curves them in a little bit with just the, the nature of FDM, melted material printing. And this ends up looking kinda blurry, like real life out of focus. So that's what happens to all the windows. The other details I have on here, the little, little Zs on these uh, barn door shutters right here, they're tiny too, less than a millimeter, and how deep are they? Again, 0.1259 millimeters, so very, very small. This stuff's all gonna get lost. It's gonna look like a little bump out on the side of it. Uh, same with these up here. They come out a little bit longer. So what is that? It's almost a millimeter, but still super, super small. So all these details, oh, this is when I do. I did when I first printed this. This right here, quarter of a millimeter uh, tall detail right here, didn't, didn't show up at all. So in the slicing, so horizontal, you can be even more conscious about horizontal dimension or horizontal uh, features. Think about, again, printing, it's, the head's gonna come along like this and draw each of these pieces right here. Uh, the average uh, quality that I print at is 0.2 millimeters per layer. So if I come right here, I'm gonna draw a line like this, take that line, and I'm gonna move it up vertically 0.2 millimeters. And I'll just do 20X. Oops, 0.2, 20X, there we go. So this is what each, so every time the print head comes along, this is how much of this wall it's gonna draw. So if you compare that dimension to this relief right here, it's less than two lines. So I can say with less than two lines, it's probably not gonna give me enough, and I know it doesn't give me enough dimension there to actually show that. So that these lines in the garage door, 
disappear completely when I actually print this out at this scale. So what to do? That's the question. Well, fortunately, I can show you. Here I have two models. This is the same one. This is the scaled down version. And then what I actually sent to the printer. So look at some of the stuff that I have in here. So first thing is the columns, right? Yes, I lose some of the detail. I lose some of the, the, the triple column here, the double column here, and I just put in one big blocky thing. But this one big blocky thing all the way across here is just a little over a millimeter. So this is not huge. This is not going to look uh, big and awkward. It's just going to have, it's, well, it's going to exist. Like I said, these got knocked out. Look at my door, look at my windows up here. This is what I ended up creating. So this still doesn't come out real far from the, the face. Let's see how far out does it come. So it's still only a quarter deep, but you can see the windows push in a lot deeper. That's almost three quarters of a, of a millimeter there. So this just gives me more detail. This gives me depth that I can actually see when I look at the print. Same with the garage door. Look at the garage door right here. I just made those little insets bigger and they're exaggerated. One of the things to remember when you 3D print on an FDM printer is that when it prints, it's going to, it's melting plastic and that plastic is gonna move, it's gonna expand, it's gonna contract, that sort of thing. So these exaggerated details I see here, it does not look ridiculous when you actually print them. Again, this is a little teeny thing that's gonna sit on my desk. This is the kind of d detail you want. I would say most details should be nothing less than half a millimeter, so I would actually, probably if I print this again, probably pull this out even a little bit more, just to give myself a little bit more depth, a little more detail. Um, and like I said, just, you gotta go a little bit bigger. So while, while like, look at these, look at this one right here. So these are two, they kind of squished into one, but again, this is just, just raising off the surface. So that actually can see right here, just a little teeny bump, it wasn't even noticeable. So when you are printing architectural models for, for 3D printing, this is the kind of thing you should have in your head you want to have these exaggerated, deeper details. You want to have larger than real life pieces in here. And this is just for exterior. Interior, same thing comes into play. Uh, you know, a three and a half inch, a four inch interior wall at 1% scale is super thin. You may have to bump all your walls up to like eight inches interior just to get them to show up in the print. Granted, I could print this on an SLA printer. Something does a little finer detail when it prints but I'm still gonna have limitations with how thick a material can be before it's too fragile, it's gonna break uh, while printing, it needs additional support, that kind of thing. So exaggerating, making things bigger is kind of the key to getting successful architectural prints out of SketchUp. So these are a lot of rules of thumb that I have come across. This is not a comprehensive, this is not exhaustive by any means, but these are the kind of things that I have learned when I, when I first started 3D printing, the first printer I ever used, one of the first things I printed was a multi-story house. And they had, you know, each floor was a separate model printed. You could look down inside of it. And I tried to print all scale and it was just a total failure. Um, the doors I ended up creating ended up being like six inch wide slabs and the walls were like maybe even a foot thick or something like that. Um, this was granted technology when I first started printing is not as advanced. The printers weren't as good as they are now, but I had to really beef everything up just to make it come out printable, make it real at all. So um, yeah, anyhow, those are some rules that I have. Those are some ideas of, of things you can do to take your architectural models there now and make them 3D printable. It's not quick, it's not easy. There's not just a simple balloon this up button. Um, so it is a little bit of work to get in there and make that happen, but it is totally doable. So, and, and really at the end, having a architectural model you can just print out by yourself, it is, it is pretty cool. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, leave us a comment down below. Have you used SketchUp for 3D printing? Have you used it for architectural printing? If so, I'd love to hear what you learned and if you have any notes that you think others would like to hear. If you can think of something else you think would make a good video, leave that down in the comments below. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.